Hello, my name is Andrei Vlasovsky and I am a developer of the PyCharm ID. In this screencast I am going to give an overview of the new features of Python 3.3. The Git repository with the demo I'll be using is hosted on GitHub. It's based on the What's New document from the standard Python 3.3 documentation. So, let's find out what's new in Python 3.3 using the PyCharm ID. We'll start with the new syntax features. The new yield from expression allows a generator function to delegate a part of its operations to another generator. Previously, you had to iterate over a subgenerator manually. Consider a function that takes an integer x and returns an iterable over values from x to 0 to x again. Let's see how it works using an interactive Python console. Starting from Python 3.3, you can use a yield from expression here. Note that PyCharm suggests you to do it automatically. Let's see that this code is equivalent to the previous one. The new yield from expression is not only shorter, but it also allows you to refactor both simple and enhanced generators with send, throw and close methods. Consider a ping pong game example, where two coroutines call each other indefinitely without stack overflow. Pong is an enhanced generator that sends and receives values using a yield expression. Let's see how it works. Now let's extract the main part of the Pong generator using the yield from expression. As you can see, the refactored code works as expected. The next syntax feature is actually an old one that has been added back for compatibility reasons. Python 3.3 allows you to use Unicode literals that start with the U character. In our example we have a unit test test case. In the test functions we check the types of an explicit bytes literal, a string literal and an explicit Unicode literal. Note that the latter two literals are equivalent, they both have type string. In Python 3.3 this test case runs with no syntax errors and all its tests pass. Note that the code compatibility inspection in PyCharm warns you about using Unicode literals if you choose compatibility with the previous Python versions. The last syntax feature is related to exception handling. When you re-erase an exception from an accept block, Python prints stack traces for both your exception and the exception that caused it. If you want to hide unnecessary details of exception handling inside your library, you can now use the erase from none statement. As you can see, the traceback is now more clear. Now let's switch to the changes in the standard library. In Python 3.3 the IO exception hierarchy has been reworked. Previously various modules used their own exceptions for reporting errors related to operating system calls – OS error, IO error, socket.error, etc. Also you had to analyze the integer value of an error code known as error null if you wanted to get access to fine-grained error conditions. In Python 3.3, all errors related to operating system calls form a hierarchy with OS error as the base class. Here you can see some subclasses of it. Error codes have been replaced with specific exceptions like file not found error or permission error. As you can see from the example, it makes exception handling code more straightforward and compact. Python 3.3 introduces several new standard library modules. 
the VNth module for creating Python virtual environments is the most interesting one. You are probably familiar with the third-party virtual env tool that allows you to create virtual environments isolated from the system-wide Python interpreter. You can create a project-specific virtual env and install packages which your project depends on without any interference with other projects. Now you can use the vnv module that comes along with pyvnv command line tool for these tasks. PyCharm uses this module internally for creating virtual environments for Python 3.3. The vnv module has the following advantages. First, it comes with Python 3.3, so you don't have to install a third-party tool. And second, the file structure of a vnv environment is much more clean compared to the file structure of a virtual env environment. The last feature of Python 3.3 I want to introduce here is implicit namespace packages. A regular Python package is a directory on your Python path with an init.py file inside it. These init.py files cause problems for package managers of Unix-like systems. If two or more ORS-level packages contain modules from the same Python package that acts like a namespace for them, then these packages cannot be installed on the same machine because only one of them must own the init.py file inside the package root. There were a couple of third-party solutions to this problem. Python 3.3 introduces implicit namespace packages. They are just directories that contain modules without any init.py files. So, as you can see, Python 3.3 brings several nice features with it, and it definitely worth trying. At the moment of the recording, the first release candidate of Python 3.3 is available for download as well as PyCharm 2.6 beta that supports it. Thank you for your attention.